All right, guys, it's time for the next level guy show. A men's interview, interest, and improvement focused podcast featuring interviews with the greats from all industries to help you better your life. Each week, a new episode features an interview with one of the greats, covering all aspects of their story, from life hacks to tips and protocols that have allowed them to live life on the next level. We then highlight concrete action steps that you can use to improve your life. And now, your host, Ian Dawson McKay. And today's guest is Steve Cam. Steve is an author and founder of NerdFitness.com, a company and worldwide community of nerds dedicated to helping each other level up their lives. He loves powerlifting and bodyweight training as much as he loves dark souls and token. When he's not out on an adventure, he's probably curled up in his hobbit hole with a good book, his wife and two dogs in Nashville, Tennessee. And now, let's get to the interview. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's an absolute joy to have somebody who I've followed for years. I've even got your book. You know, it's a true pleasure to have you on. You were one of the first people that inspired me to get into blogging. So thank you for that. But for people who maybe don't recognize the name, could you give a quick introduction? Sure. So my name is Steve Cam, and I am the rebel leader of Nerd Fitness, um, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is an online health and fitness community for nerds, uh, for people that self-identify, uh, you know, love nerdy culture, grew up playing video games, get lost in Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and, uh, you know, get lost in Star Wars, etc. So I just had a random idea at this point, geez, 14 years ago, and then it took me a few years to work up the courage to finally start it. But I started uh, nerdfitness.com as a blog simply because I Googled nerd and fitness and nothing popped up. So I bought nerdfitness.com, started writing articles about helping people get started with their health and fitness journeys. And over the past 12 years at this point, it's evolved from just me and my blog into now a worldwide community. We have a team of, I think about 40 team members now at Nerd Fitness who serve that community. Um, and it's really become uh, something that is far beyond anything I ever could have imagined. Because it is a phenomenal success. You know, you have uh, retreats, you have camps, you have all these amazing things. But I read somewhere that you said that you actually started it because your motherboard fried on your computer. <laughs> and you couldn't play the game, so you thought, I'm going to give this a try. Was that the inspiration that you couldn't find a site that fitted? Because like I find that when uh, fitness, it's either the meathead stuff or it's very kind of, t- you know, they talk down to you, very condescending. D- did you find that you needed to create your own platform for fellow like-minded people? Yeah, well, so a, f- a few things there. I-, I I had the idea for Nerd Fitness and like many people, my I have I have ideas all the time. Most of them are terrible, but every once in a while, I have a what I think is a good idea, and I had the idea enough so that I bought the domain nerdfitness.com, and then I spent exactly two years doing absolutely nothing with it. I was still dedicating a lot of my time to playing online poker, and then. Uh, even more time, I think, playing an online video game. At the time, it was playing. Uh, I was playing a game called EverQuest. Or I think it was EverQuest Two, and I just couldn't seem to find the time to work on Nerd Fitness because I was too busy escaping into EverQuest. So I eventually, my homemade computer, uh, it was over. I think I had overclocked it, and uh, I managed to fry the insides of it so much so that I physically like I couldn't I could, it just didn't turn on anymore and I didn't have the money to fix it and that was kind of like that you know hero's journey call to action for me of like hey you've been refusing this call for two years now that idea that you can't seem to get away from maybe it's time to finally start it and like you said I I had tried 
getting in shape myself through uh, high school and then university and enjoyed the gym. I enjoyed picking up heavy things because I was a scrawny, skinny nerd. And I like the idea of like becoming a stronger version of myself. That's like straight out of video game, you know, life. Um, but everything I found, like you said, was either for, you know, like super jacked meatheads or it was you know, like really uh, attractive models, like telling you that you need to buy supplements and that you're mm -hmm. not good enough unless you do this thing. And like it, just none of it resonated with me. And that's when I just figured like there have to be other people like me that are brand new to health and fitness that are totally turned off by these websites that are covered in ads, covered in um, d demands to sell, you know, for people to buy supplements and uh, kind of just really shady tactics to make people feel less than and make them feel bad about themselves, unless they had this super secret thing that scientists hate or, you know, whatever it may be. And I was like, I wonder if, if I can do something different. You know, there's, there's tons, there's millions of fitness websites out there seemingly I wonder if I can carve out my own little spot. And in order for me to do that, I had to do things very differently. And that's where that idea of like, okay, nerd fitness, it is for beginners that self-identify as nerds. And that is who I'm going to speak to. And that's the language I'm going to use. And that's the types of articles I'm going to write. And the photos I'm going to use are going to be of Lego characters. Uh, there's not going to be any ads. The site will make $0 for quite a while because I don't even know how I'm going to make it into a business. I'm just going to focus on writing stuff and helping people and we'll figure the rest out later. Well, you've certainly done that. I mean, yours was the first site I found where it actually made fitness fun. You know, like I tried to follow like men's health and it was like, talking about protein windows and all this kind of jazz, you know, and then you go to the sites yep. like, here's 10 secrets we know that no one else knows. And you're like, okay, here we go. What what do you want me to buy? But right. yours was like, you know, become like Jason Bourne. And I live for like Harry Potter, Jason Bourne, James, James Bond, so even, and all that. And I'm, and I'm sitting there just like, I really love this stuff. And every time you posted an article, it was so inspiring and it made me go and do stuff. I mean, your book, which is awesome, you know, the, the you. epic quest of awesomeness, you know, like just the <laughs> names you put and stuff, the the personality you put in your posts. But was that what got you into it originally was playing the games and seeing the sort of level up the, like the development of a character that attracted you and you thought you could do this with fitness? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think a lot of it, you know, it's really easy to look back, look backwards and connect the dots and say like, oh, I definitely did it this way or I totally had a plan. Uh, I didn't. I I was just... <laughs> I know that I feeling. A, yeah, I was, a, I was working a job that I didn't love and I stumbled across a, a book um, called The 4-Hour Workweek. And, you know, there's a lot of that book that uh, I think maybe doesn't resonate with many, but there was a, a part of it that I really loved and it was this... One, it was the idea of like, life is happening now and this whole idea of waiting until you're 65 to then start living um mm. all the things i've ever wanted to do i probably wouldn't physically be able to do at 65 like you i love james james uh james bond and jason Bourne, and but i never traveled outside of my home country really uh up until that point so a lot of it was okay if i'm so i'm gonna start this nerdy website hadn't even thought about like oh what if we turned life into a game that kind of happened organically it was okay wait a second if i'm writing about nerdy stuff like ooh, what if i write an article about you know james bond what does that look like Ooh, okay how would i if i were to become a well i guess a non-assassination version of james <laughs> james bond or no, you know a legal james bond what would that look like <laughs> okay well, there's certain things i would have to do and i would have to train in a certain way and that's an interesting idea. Like, let's 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 flesh that out and let's write an article about that. Or, hey, you know that game I used to play for 40 hours a week in addition to my job? Like, what is it about the game that I love? And it was like, oh, I love the idea of making progress. I love the idea of seeing progress. I love the idea of grouping up with other people. And I love the idea of exploring far off lands and wondering what's around that next corner. And realizing like, oh, that's 
all of the stuff that I love you know, from, from the Hobbit to Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings to it's a lot of these things follow the same archetype, Indiana Jones. So it was, all right, I think I'm starting to get somewhere with this. And then it was just mm. consistently kind of iterating on that. So, okay, all right, we're going to try to become Indiana Jones. All right, well, Indiana Jones likes to explore ancient ruins. And, oh, I can get a cheap flight to Peru. And Machu Picchu is ancient ruins. That seems like something Indiana Jones would do. Like, that seems pretty cool. Like, what's what would that look like? And how can I do it really, really cheaply? Because I didn't have any money. So it was identifying ways to do and kind of pay uh, homage or homage to my favorite characters and heroes and video games by trying to take the best elements of those things and like transpose them into a real life scenario that I can uh, use to give myself a fun adventure, give myself a challenge, give myself a story to look back on and um, kind of push myself outside of my comfort zone too. Because it's it's amazing that you took something that like not a lot of people knew, but you're like you took game theory, and like the Tim Ferriss thing of, you know, why wait till you're sixty? Because why not take many retirements now and go away and do the things you want while you've got the money, the resources, the health to go do it? And when I seen your site, I was like, oh, I could get through spreadsheets at work by pretending I am Jack Bauer, <laughs> you know, try to stop a bomb by getting them down by a certain time. Or, you know, like yep. it started putting, making fun. It's like, oh, I want to go away and try CrossFit because I want to be physically fit, like ready for anything like Jack Bauer, um, like Jason Bourne even. And then I was like, oh, I need to go and build a community like the fellowship. So I'm going to go and join a meetup group. And it completely changed my life. And I was like, whoa and then i started roller coasting into these things and there's so much amazing things there is that something that you think everybody could do is to take this sort of game theory and set up their own quest of awesomeness yeah i mean i well i mean probably not everybody i bet there are some people that take life very seriously mm -hmm. and you know tons of people that stumble across nerd fitness and they're like uh I like your services, but can you tone down the nerd part of it? Because it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. And I'm like, uh, no, the clues in the uh, title. <laughs> yeah. Like this is kind of, this is kind of who we are. Um, and we're, we're, we're proud of that. And if this is not something that resonates with you, like no problem. Like there are infinite other communities and groups to be a part of. So I think for nerd fitness it, in our community, we refer to ourselves as the rebellion, you know, paying, uh, you know, it's heavily inspired by Star Wars and the uh, Rebel Alliance. Um, as we all know, rebellions are built on hope. And for us, I think it's this idea of that, like, hope is a good thing and hoping for a better future and having this idealized or even slightly romanticized version of what you could become is really helpful to start as long as you're also combining that with action. So like lots of people have hopes, lots of people have dreams, but you have to take the fun parts of your games and movies, but then actually put a plan in place to start working your way towards that stuff. Otherwise, you're just kind of stuck daydreaming and not actually making progress. So I think anybody can do it. Um, will everybody do it? No. And I think for some people, maybe like that's just not the right angle for them. And that's totally okay. But for us rebels in the Nerd Fitness Rebellion, uh, it seems to work. It's taking the things that we love, the things that we grew up with, the stories that uh, were told to us or that we read or participated in, and finding a way to to breathe a bit more fun and, and excitement into, let's be honest, you know, the drudgery of some of our day-to-day -day activities. Hmm. going for a run or going to the gym might not be super fun, but when you can put a great reason behind why you're doing it and paint that picture and, and reframe how you're thinking about those things, more of a, you know, you being the hero of a story, it can certainly make it more enjoyable, at least until inertia takes over and those things start to become part of who you are. Well, that's a fantastic answer. I mean, because that's what I found was everybody's got something they geek out about, you know, something they, they're afraid their friends will find out because they see it as nerdy and uncool or whatever. But I loved how you just took it and ran with it, you know, and you kind of went, 
okay, I need to do like a fitness one. I need to do a travel one. And I'm going to give myself 50 experience points like the game. And then I, you know, I started linking it to like the game map. So as you explore more into the map, more of it comes out of the grayed out area and you start seeing more of it and you get the more quests. You know, you were doing them um, pull-ups off ruins and things like that. And it was just phenomenal. It was so inspiring when I seen it. How do we find our own call of action? Have you found a way to kind of say to people, like, just to find more in life? To you know, how do we stop hiding behind what society thinks we should be like and actually just be ourselves? Do you think? Sure. I mean, this is obviously easier said than done. You know, right? Everybody, everybody has that that poster on their or sees remembers the poster on the wall of like in grade school or like their mom has like the art, you know, it's like be yourself because everybody else is taken. And it's like, well, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. But also like doing things differently is terrifying, right? Like there is a reason that everybody most rather, there's a reason most people do the same stuff and go the same places and live the same way and get the same cozy, comfy job because it's, it's easy. The path is well trodden and, it's uh, it's comfortable, and being uncomfortable sucks. Right? Like there is an evolutionary part of us that is uh, not does not like t- being outside of our comfort zone, and doing that requires a lot of courage, and it's almost like a muscle that needs to be developed. So, for somebody that is trying to do this, um. You know, we talk about a, a lot of this with uh, nerd fitness these days, but just this idea of almost crafting your own alter ego. And it's like, uh, you know, Clark Kent, well, I guess Superman's the one inverted one, but, um, you know, every superhero, uh, you have Peter Parker, and then his alter ego is is Spider-Man or Chris Evans, Chris Evans, um, you know, uh, Stephen, oh my God, Steve Rogers, geez, I have Captain America's shield right behind me. Um, Steve Rogers, you know, becomes... Captain America. Uh, so you have this version of yourself who you are that has day-to-day responsibilities. And then there is this alternative version of you, this alter ego mm-hmm. that maybe the rest of the world doesn't get to see, but you get to craft what those things are, um, or what, what the attributes are of that new version of you. And that's creating like this superhero version of yourself that might be a little bit more risk you know, willing to take more risks or try something different, or um, they can push through uh, the uncomfortableness of signing up or trying something new when the regular version of you would be a little more likely to stay in the shadows or stay leaning against the wall. So I think it it helps to draw from your favorite heroes. Uh, Like for me, it's like I said, I have Captain America's shield on my wall behind me. My name is Steve, just like Steve Rogers. I was also skinny and weak, uh, just like Steve Rogers. And I wanted to do the right thing and inspire people through my actions. And, you know, that's what Captain America stands for. So I like to think oftentimes, like, what would Cap do in this situation? And that works for me. For other people, mm-hmm. it might be Bruce Wayne and Batman, or it might be, Katniss Everdeen becoming the the Mockingjay in Hunger Games. Um, it might be Black Widow and or Wonder Woman. Like who knows what it may be, but it's taking the characters that you love, the stories that maybe that that you are inspired by, and starting to craft what this alternative version of you could look like. You could even give your character a name. You can come up with a backstory or an origin story. We all know the best superhero stories or movies are the origin stories that hmm. you know teach us about who the heroes are and how they came to be. And I think starting there and being inspired by those people, we can kind of hype ourselves up and say like, "All right, uh, you know, Steve might not be able to do this. Uh, my personal, you know, alter ego is Rebel One. He's the leader of the Nerd Fitness Rebellion, whereas regular Steve doesn't want to do." you know, is afraid to get on a stage and is definitely afraid of public speaking. Rebel One loves spreading the message of nerd fitness and wants to help people and gladly puts himself out there and um, is comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I kind of have to embrace these other aspects of uh, this alter ego to get the things done that I feel compelled to do. So I think everybody can pick their favorite character or a story arc from their favorite show 
writing those things out and starting to craft their own alter ego. And then we can talk a bit more about like, what do you do when you need that final nudge or how do you actually get yourself to do things that scare you? Um, one final thing I'll add here is, as you mentioned, like, how do you do things that, you know, society might say is like a little weird or um, kind of goes against the grain? Having a community of people who are doing those things and living differently and bucking stereotypes and pushing outside of, you know, specific norms or societal norms, having other people that you can reach out to and, and learn from and get support, get support from that can be really, really valuable. And I think that's been one of the best parts of nerd fitness is this, this justice league of, of people from all over the globe with all different talents and superheroes powers and, um, having that having such a wide group of people come together and support each other has been really really powerful because you get people that say like you know follow the joseph campbell hero's journey you know and you're gonna go away and find who you are and do all these things but you know you get your family go don't don't be silly go and stay in your job or your friends go no come to the pub don't go and work out or whatever and one of the articles you wrote i can't remember years ago it completely changed my life was that berserker 20 seconds of courage you know, like that kind of rage to go and take on the army by yourself, like, you know, just pushing yourself to go outside of that comfort zone. And even now, I still think of it and I always recommend it to people. Do you think that's what we need? Is that initial thing? Before we start thinking we're going to do this, this and this, we have to just, like you say in the book, we just need to start basic. You know, you're not going to run a marathon like on the beach, like say Jason Bourne, like sprint on the beach, but you can maybe go for a walk. You could just start small, just take that first step. How do you, how do you find people to get over that fear of starting the gym or just becoming healthier in general? Sure. So that's one of my, one of the, I think the things that has resonated the most with our community and to this day, it still does. But, you know, I, I learned about, uh, back in, you know, uh, the days of Viking raids, they had berserkers who would like hype themselves up to into like this frenzy and almost like they had uh you know star power in super mario brothers like all of a sudden like they felt invincible and that allowed them to run headfirst into danger when you know without that hype or that excitement they would have you know maybe maybe thought twice about it and it reminded me of there's a a, a children's book that i read back in i jeez i must have been 10 or 11 called Salamandistron. It was written by Brian Jocks, who wrote the Red Wall series. And he wrote this series of books and it's mm -hmm. about, you know, mice and badgers and they're 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 like it's almost like Lord of the Rings meets uh um yeah, Rings fantastic of Mr. Fox. Uh. Um it's fascinating, brilliantly written children's books. Um, the way that he describes food in these books is uh, unbelievable. But anyways, one of the characters is a badger and he has this thing called blood wrath. And like when this badger gets hyped up, it's like this badger can lay waste to an army of foxes or vermin that are trying to invade his home. So I find these examples and then I happen to find myself sitting on a plane and I'm watching a movie uh, starring Matt Damon called We Bought a Zoo and in it, he talks about 20 seconds of courage and its idea that like you can be scared before and you can be terrified after. But if hmm. you can find a way to muster up just 20 seconds of courage, like it can truly be life changing. So I kind of combine these things. You have like the blood wrath from Salamandistron and you have the berserkers of Viking legend. And then you have 20 seconds of courage from a Matt Damon movie and realizing that like life can change in 20 seconds. It's you making the decision to sign up for a class that you're afraid to go to. Like once you put pen to paper and sign up, inertia has begun. You've done the step. And after that, it's just doing the next thing or seeing somebody that you want to talk to in a coffee shop or somebody in your classroom that you want to say hi to. Like, it can be terrifying, but if you can embrace that alter ego, that alternate version of yourself, just for 20 seconds, like if you can get the ball rolling, if you can kind of put yourself one step beyond being able to turn back, more often than not, you're going to, you know, like a, a, to quote um, Yamish in, in the movie Braveheart, well, we didn't get dressed up for nothing. Like 
this idea that like, well, you've come this far, you've done the thing hmm. to get here. You might as well continue the next step. Um, kind of like Frodo and Sam, Sam saying, if I take one more step, this is the furthest from home I've ever been. And that was a terrifying step for Samwise to make, to take that step outside of the Shire. But the second he took that step, it was like, okay, that was monumental. And now I'm just going to take the next steps. And it was those big moments, 20 seconds of courage for Sam to step across that threshold and into this extraordinary world and say, like, life is going to be different now as a result of it. So I think recruiting an ally, recruiting friends to like, I'm really scared to do this thing. But if you have a group of friends that maybe you can rely on, um, using 20 seconds of courage to like, just only focus on that 20 seconds and that one thing you need to do to cross the threshold, to make the step, to start the conversation, to walk into your boss's office, to sign the contract, to join a gym membership, whatever it may be, like put all of your focus into those 20 seconds, embrace this alter ego. And once you're on the other side of it, like you can be mad at yourself, you can be frustrated, you could be scared, but like you've already done the tough thing. Now it's just following the next steps after that. Because you hear that quite a lot, don't you? As people say, I don't know what made me do it, but I went up and spoke to that girl, and now she's my wife. I, I was not going to go to the job interview, but it became my career. You know, it's, And I think that's the thing. Is like We all think, oh, that's just in films. That doesn't happen in real life. But we can all probably think every of day. an example. Yeah, we can probably all think of an example, even now that we do and go, oh, that is my choice. And it sticks in your head. You just go... I need my berserker carriage and you go do it. And you're like, what? And it completely changes your life. But how do we then start setting the quest? I mean, I would love for everybody to go and read that article you wrote on, you know, your level up experience, your journey throughout the world. You know, you're playing like James Bond in a casino and Monte Carlo. You're doing all these amazing things, but you set it brilliantly like small goals and you then give yourself experience points how would we start setting like goals for people to do and assign us experience points and level up like our favorite character? How would we even begin that? Do you think? Sure. So I think there's a, there's a fallacy out there that change or dramatic change has to come from dramatic action. And, you know, it's, it's somebody like, you know, emptying out their fridge and starting a blog and saying like, I'm going to become the fittest person in the world and declaring it to everybody. And like, that was the moment things changed. Um, I don't necessarily think that's true. I think change is often small and not only small, but it happens in quiet moments or it happens when nobody's looking, you know, if somebody is trying to lose, let's say they're trying to lose some weight and get healthy and they're in the, the grocery store and they pick up a candy bar and they decide for the first time ever, instead of, you know, they put the candy bar back down or they say no, or they pick up a vegetable. Like it can be small. And those small changes, I think we learned from the movie Prometheus. What is it from such big changes over or so, such big changes from small beginnings? Some, some, there's some, some quote there, uh, something like that, that I'm totally butchering, but you know, it's almost like a, like a domino effect, right? It's these tiny changes that slowly build up over time and each change, the next change is a little bit more and a little bit more. And six, 12 months later, two years, five years later, you look back at your past self and you don't even recognize them. Um, and I think that's far more common. And that's why I love, that's what I, what I fell in love with when it comes to video games. It's this idea that you start out this weak, scrawny, completely naive person who has no idea how the world or even the game mechanics work. And you're initially tasked with like, Hey, here's a wooden sword. Go clear the sewers with, you know, kill the rats in the sewers. And you go in this, the, the sewer and you, you with your wooden sword and it, you, you, you kill five rats and it takes you an hour and a half. And you're like, wow. And then you come out and they're like, that's great. Congratulations. You're now level two. Here is a rusty metal sword. We need you to go kill the spiders in this cave. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go do that. And you go kill the rusty, you go, go kill the spiders in the cave. And this repeats itself in a very satisfying loop for 
10, 20, 30, 50, 500 hours until by the end of the game, you're like slaying dragons and your character is riding a flaming horse and your armor is like, you know, mirrored and you can levitate. You can do all this cool stuff. But like you didn't just jump to that, yeah. right? You start slaying rats in the sewer with a wooden sword. So we have this alternate version of ourselves. We have the favorite characters and games that we love or the favorite movies that we love. So I think it helps maybe if you're, if you've identified the person you want to become, how can you break that into the smallest number of chunks possible looking backwards or, you know, working your way backwards from like this epic, like I said, flame horse riding badass. um, looking backwards like okay what's the next step what's the equivalent for you of you know killing rats in the sewer uh let's say you want to run a marathon um that first step is probably like putting on whatever pair of shoes you have it doesn't mean going out and buying the nicest running shoes it doesn't mean going for a run it means putting on a pair of shoes walking to your mailbox or walking to the street corner and deciding like that's enough for today and come back tomorrow and walk two steps further. And like, that's it. As long as you are doing something slightly more or slightly further or slightly more challenging, picking up a weight that's slightly heavier than last time, like that's where change happens. It's not in the grandiose declarations of change. It is in the consistently making progress parts of your life that true change, permanent change is going to happen. So it's identifying like the smallest changes that you can make and then finding a way to be adherent and consistent with those changes over weeks and months. And as you build this routine or build this habit of making smaller changes, um, you know, you can, you can identify or you can say like, all right, every day I go for a walk, I get five experience points. And every time I get 100 experience points, I level up. So that means every 20 days of going for a small, short walk, you level up. Maybe it's, and then it's, okay, once I reach level five, I'm going to buy a new pair of running shoes. And that thing will be the thing that I'm looking forward to in the future, just like leveling up in a game and you get better weapons that inspire you to want to go fight bigger things and go explore further locations. Um it's simply just adding some fun kind of gamification elements to it um, Mm. so that it gets easier and easier for you to do the right thing or do the thing that you're interested in doing. And for this instance, it's, you know, like I want to go for a walk every day. Like let's find a way to make that fun and gamify it a bit and give you something as a reward that is going to reward you back with wanting you to make you continue even down that path until eventually instead of slaying a dragon, you are running a marathon. I love it. I mean, I was smiling the way through that because I was imagining when I was younger, I used to deadlift and I would pretend there was like a little gold plus five every time I did a deadlift. They'd pop up, you know, and they'd ought to be, okay, every time I bought a new set of clothes, I was like, oh, that's a new skin for my character. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was trying to follow that and it was like, I love that kind of approach. And I thought, because you don't see the changes, you know, every day in, day out. But you can imagine yourself like throwing out the the junk food and or batch pro food um, cooking, and you yep. go, "Oh, that's my character leveling up there." And I love how in your epic quest of awesomeness, you have like the little bars coming across, and every percentage you go up, and you know it just adds in progression when we're not seeing it. Is that a good way? Do you think for people to monitor how they're progressing as they're doing things to write out their goals and then add levels and like set mini goals and like boss levels and things like that. I, I mean, it, it worked for me and it works yeah. for the, our, our community. So I think it's, I think it's a, something that certainly people could try, you know, for people that are trying to figure this out. Like, look, we're all trying to do the same thing. Right. And that's like, we all want to be probably a little healthier. We'd love to get a little bit more sleep. We'd probably like to eat a little healthier. We'd love to travel more. We'd love to spend more time on our hobbies or with our family maybe improve ourselves with work. Um, and as you mentioned, and it's, it's really tough when you don't see the progress on a day-to-day basis. It can feel like drudgery if you're just 
doing the same thing over and almost like, what's the point, right? But if you have this goal that you're working towards, and for me, it was, it was, you know, different areas of my life. It was, I wanted to, I wanted to learn specific skills. I wanted to have specific experiences in certain locations. I wanted to uh, build a certain amount of strength. So I identified a few different categories and then I assigned a point value to them and it just gave me a thing to check in on. And what's funny is like, I, you know, I did this from a gaming perspective, but you know, Benjamin Franklin was doing stuff like this back in the 1700s. I think it was, you know, one of the very few first or one of the first people to like look at his life in terms of categories and say like, am I improving? I think he has 10 categories, but like, am I improving uh, across journal each of or something? Categories? Yeah, yeah, use a journal. And it was literally like checking a box across the 10 categories each day. Like, did I improve in these areas? And when you can kind of break it down into that binary, yes, no, win, loss, succeed, fail scenario, um, it starts to get addicting in a good way. It's like, okay, I went for my five minute walk today. I, um, I spent five minutes playing the piano. I, uh, you know, I did my workout and I added one pound to the bar when it came to my deadlift, or I added, you know, one kilo to the bar on my squat. Um, I was able to do one extra knee push up today compared to last time. And tracking this stuff and assigning some points, and, you know, maybe it's split out like categories. Uh, I think it can be really fun, like a fun way to keep things interesting, but also like just a good reminder to like not take ourselves too seriously either. Like, you know, we are emotional disasters on a rock hurtling through space, right? Like hmm. the fact that I'm talking to you from this United States and you are, you're in the, somewhere in the UK right now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, th we're talking to each other. That's ridiculous. Like the fact that any of this works is frankly ridiculous. So like identifying and remembering and saying like, Hey, look, like, yes, like life sucks sometimes. And work blows and sometimes our kids are, are jerks and we're in a fight with our spouse or whatever it may be. But like identifying and adding in some gamification and, and working on ourselves, but doing it in a way that kind of like is both fun and also reminds us to not take things too seriously, I think can be a great, a great balance between we're working on ourselves and also have some fun too, because man, if we're not having fun, um, tomorrow's no guarantee. Uh, so finding a way to have a little bit of fun with even stuff like going to the gym or cutting vegetables because you're on a diet, like having a way to finding a way to have some fun with that can be really valuable in uh, out keeping your sanity through the next you know months and years as you're in the process of transforming. It's time for a quick break. There are millions of potential products to buy, so how do you know which ones are worth your hard-earned money? Simple. You go to nextlevelguy.com slash affiliates and explore those that will transform and improve your life. You'll find deals, listener exclusives, and special offers with some great companies. Recommendations are 100% honest and only on items Ian has tried or believes in. The companies showcased will make you a better man in all areas of your life. Simply go to nextlevelguy.com slash affiliates and level up. I mean, it's, it's so inspiring because I would not be where I am now. I wouldn't be doing this podcast if I hadn't found your site. You know, this, like I wouldn't have gone and done half the stuff I've done because I, I would never have been inspired by your epic quest i would have never have um started the podcast because i would never have known about the berserker rage that just kind of clicked in my head one day and i remember gary vanerchak was doing 15 minute interviews a uh, podcast today just to give back to smaller podcasts and i remember thinking ah, i'm not gonna apply and then i just remember that clicked in my head and i applied and i was one of the six uh, lucky few and he was the first ever guest i had on my podcast and That's i would so never cool. have done that and that's what I mean. It's like your book was so inspiring. I love how you break it down. You you take out all the BS excuses people have, like I'm too old or I don't have the skills or I'm, I've got kids, and you make it just fun. You know, it's like instead look at building a community of like your like Fellowship of the Ring. 
you know, go, go find your NPCs to go and do stuff with. You need to learn things. Cool. Become like Jason Bourne and become anti-fragile. You know, plan for everything. You, you make it fun and exciting. And, you know, how many times you see guys at the gym and they go, you want to go for a pint after it? Because you've had a workout, you feel great. And they go, no, no, I need to go and get my refeed in between my carb window and all this kind of, you know, and it's, I think sometimes that's the thing. It's either super strict or we're kind of just normal people. And I love this element of gamification you've put in. So how do we track it? Like what's the best way you found of tracking it? Do you journal? Do you set your goals for the week? Like how do you make this a habit and a fist, a system of fitness? Sure. So, uh, it's actually, I've gone through a ton of evolution on this. I mean, initially it was tracked, I think in an Excel, you know, a, a spreadsheet really. Um, but uh, since then, you know, there was uh, some parts of Nerd Fitness Online that you could do it, but we actually built out a, an app called Nerd Fitness Journey, uh, mm -hmm. which is something that we're super proud of. It's available on Android or Apple, or, you know, if you just oh, search for questions Nerd, Fitness, <laughs> Nerd Fitness Journey, it's like, okay, let's take this idea of characters and this idea of having different paths for people to go on. And like, mm -hmm. let's, that it seems like it just lends itself so well to an app and, uh, it seems to be something that our community is really, really enjoying. But in it, you just create a little character. Your character can earn items and and new, you know, like like you said, a new skin for your character. You can earn, you know, we have thousands of items in there for your character so that you can customize them in a way that um, fits your personality. But then we also have adventures. And, you know, instead of just like I'm going on a diet, it's like there was a 10 level adventure in the app specifically for helping people understand nutrition. So it's not just like, all right, I'm going to eat a vegetable today, but like, Oh, uh, it turns out there was a, you know, there's a, you were, you know, the super villain, um, a super villain has, you know, has, has poisoned you with this laughing, blah, blah, blah. However, it's counteracted by, vegetables so if you eat one vegetable per day over the next three days we feel pretty confident it will flush out of your system so it's like we've tried to identify some fun storylines or hey instead of uh you know instead of oh i'm just going to go for a walk it's like we need your help charging this gigantic battery uh and every time you go for a run your movement is going to help uh, us as a community charge this gigantic battery so you earn experience points and your character levels up we have dozens and dozens of adventures we have a journaling adventure we have a meditation adventure we have a, uh, I think and then we have nutrition workouts body weight running get your first pull up we have all of those adventures built in there and this is just after tons of trial and error around like what are the challenges that people are facing they want to track this stuff they want to be able to earn um, experience points and see a character level up. So they want to see progression and they also want to earn swag for their character because everybody loves earning like a new shield or a new Cape. Um, so yeah, it's an, it's a, it's a paid app, but it does have a free seven day trial that there's no credit card required. Anybody can try it. Um, but it's something we've been working on for years and, you know, continue, we expect to continue uh, kind of evolving it. So, um, I think, you know, bare bones, anybody can start a spreadsheet or get a journal and just write it by hand. That might be the most like intimate way to do it and, and fun. Um, if somebody's looking for a little bit more guidance and they want like very specific instruction and they want the levels and characters and um, that stuff handled for them, including fun stories and really corny superhero or supervillains, um, you know, that's what we have at uh, Nerd Fitness and in the Nerd Fitness journey. Because, I mean, I loved, like, when I initially found your site because there was the forums were phenomenal. Like, the community you've built, it's so positive and reassuring and everybody helps each other. You know, there's no trolls. There's none of this kind of silly 14-year-old calling everybody a bitch. And, so, you know, everybody yeah. kind of helps you so much. And I love in the book how you, you break it down into warriors, mages, you assassins, you know everybody has their place they can fit into the group into their mission and it's such a great way of looking at it how do you what's the importance of a community in developing what have you found about building communities and what has it taught you about fitness yeah i again i feel like you know this is really easy for me to 
to connect the dots looking backwards, but I guess I can share some of the lessons I've learned. When I started the site, I, I had zero plans of making a community. I had zero plans of hiring a team of people. Um, I was just like, I'm going to start a blog. I'm going to write stuff and eventually figure out how to make a living off of it. Uh, Cause I was, you know, working a full-time job and working on the site just at night. And after about a year, kind of realizing like, wait a second, like I'm just, I'm just one guy. This community is massive. I think, uh, you know, we have a huge, uh, I think I, I want to say like 60, 60% of our audience is, is female. We have a huge LGBTQ plus community. We have single parents. We have young people, old people, Olympic athletes, people that are brand new um, to trying health and fitness. So hmm. I very quickly, you know, learned or in interacting with people in the comments on the site, that was like, man, I can only share my personal perspective. But there are so many other amazing people here that I bet could share their own perspective and would be really valuable to this group. So that's when nerd fitness kind of shifted in my head from just a solo blog to like, no, this is a community and I'm a small part of it. Um, the thing that has warmed my heart more than anything else is people stumble across the site and they say something like, for the first time in my life, I don't feel alone anymore. Or they say something like, I feel like I found my family or I feel like I found my tribe. Um, and that makes me feel so good because that's all we're looking for really is like we're trying to find connection and, and in everything moving more and more to be disconnected and people to be angrier and, and argumentative. Uh, I'm so proud that nerd fitness has become a place of, I don't want to say pure joy because people share their, their struggles and challenges, but it is a place of absolute support. Uh, we don't care where you came from. We only care where you're going and how we can help you get there. Um, bring all of you, to this community. And that means like your, your weirding, your weirdness, your quirks, um, your, you know, what makes you who you are, that's really valuable. So that part of nerd fitness and having a community to lean on and just knowing that you're not alone. And then maybe even more importantly, having somebody else that has probably gone through what you're going through right now, they can help kind of pull you through the fire and then you get to be that mentor to somebody behind you who is coming at it from the same perspective and, and maybe has similar challenges. You know, it's, I'm, I'm so thankful that I get to live the life that I do. And I know that there are many people in much more challenging situations. They're playing the game of life on legendary difficulty or hardcore mode. And, uh, I'm honored that they're, you know, they can still find, uh, they can still get inspired by the messages that I'm putting out into the world. And they're excited to adapt them for their own situation, whether they're a single mom or, you know, a, a dad working three jobs or whatever it may be. Um, community is really powerful. And we've fought really hard to make sure that the nerd fitness community stays positive and often, don't we don't mind telling people hey this probably isn't for you um and being okay with that you know it's important for us to cultivate that culture of support and community and belonging and uh we know that that's not going to resonate with everybody or that certain people are going to have different opinions on the direction the community should go and we do our best to help people um, but we also have no problem saying like, it sounds like this community probably isn't for you. And I wish you the best of luck on wherever you may end up. Mm -hmm. um, but my duty is to the nerd fitness rebellion and making sure that those people feel supported and you know challenged, but in a, in a safe way, I guess, for lack of a better term. So community is so, so, so powerful. It's something that we focus so much on. And it's something that if, you know, anybody is listening to this and they feel like they haven't found one yet, uh, we would gladly you know, love to have you check out nerd fitness and see if, um, you know, we'd be something that could fit and help you reach your goals and become that superhero version of yourself. I mean, I loved it when I found it because I went in and there was nobody calling you a dick. There was nobody doing, you know, people were kind of going, coming in and saying, I'm 25 stone and people are like, cool. Okay. Let's get your food started. Let's get you better. Start walking, do that. And everybody was so encouraging and, 
Um, there used to be was it the Woo Room? I think you called it. Um, oh yeah. Tour, <laughs> and people would come in, and every single like, even no matter how small it was, people like the the goals that they achieved people were like amazing good for you kind of pushing each other on and you could see the growth of people in it in the community i mean you see the joy in people's faces because they're they're being themselves when they come to your meetup groups and things like that you know how do you think that's the thing is people have forgotten how to be how to have fun and we're letting society dictate who we are and we're like neo we're trying to break out of the matrix Yeah, I mean, I'm also, you know, I started this, like I said, 12, I bought the domain 14 years ago, but man, the the things I've learned in 14 years and and really coming to understand just how much I don't know, like comically, I thought, you know, I'm I'm 38 now. I thought I had life figured out at 26. Like I had, (laughs) like, and just, I I had it all figured out. And now I look back and, oh, sweet, naive Steve. But, you know, I'm also thankful that I took a chance back then and tried this and kind of threw caution into the wind a bit and took a chance on starting something and, and, uh, you know, eventually getting out of the way and letting the movement kind of do its thing. Um, I think with everything on the internet being so divisive right now, and everybody just being angry and knowing that anger is what gets clicks and gets shares and what gets page views and what tracks our attention. I think we have to be very careful about where our attention is going online. Um, you know, I'm very deliberate about who I follow on Instagram. I'm very deliberate about where my time on my phone goes. I'm very deliberate about how I use Facebook. Uh, literally the only reason I use Facebook anymore is to check in on the nerd fitness Facebook group. Like I'm that's sure. it. That's yeah. the only thing I go to. I have my wall turned off. I, or I have my news feed turned off. I can't see it. Um, I, it's just, there is no shortage of ways to feel angry on the internet if you're looking for it. And even when you're not looking for it, that's just so common. So I'm very deliberate about where that time goes, where my attention is spent. Um, because I would re- much rather divert that energy into my real life to playing the musical instruments sitting next to me or reading another book behind me or spending time with my wife and my dogs on a walk. Um, Those things are so much more important to me. But if you're not careful, you can spend all day online outraged at the, the whatever thing happened that day. And then by the, but whatever it is that for that day. And then by the next day, you've already moved the, the world has moved on to the next thing and forgotten the previous thing. Um, so it's really challenging, right? Uh, I, I think it comes down to living deliberately. You know, the, I, I, geez, I'm going to butcher this too, but I, I'm going to say, I think it was Seneca talking about the, you know, a tragedy of living an unexamined life. Um, or, you know, Ben Franklin saying, you know, most men die at 25, but they're not buried until 75. I think if we're not careful, it's really easy to sleepwalk through our existence and to just focus on the tiny, the the mundane things in front of us. And if we're not careful, years can go by. So as we're examining our life and stopping this unexamined existence, we can identify, okay, maybe I'm actually spending way too much time on TikTok or I'm spending way too much time on Instagram or getting mad and replying to people on Twitter. Like, or it's, Hey, I'm realizing that my job is actually toxic and my boss sucks. Like it starts by examining kind of where you are, um, with some self-compassion, you know, we all didn't know what we didn't know and we all got to where we are and we all learned a lot of lessons from that. So all we can really do is focus on what we're going to do moving forward. And for me, it was, I have lived a pretty fun life, but it was a comfortable life. I had never traveled much. I'd never taken any serious risks. Uh, Certain things came easy to me and other things didn't. And I only focused on the easy things. Uh, And I had to examine my life and identify the type of life I wanted to live and get specific with it. And then it simply came down to, you know, that berserker mode using this 20 seconds of courage to buy the domain name starting the blog and and fumbling and failing and and writing articles that nobody was reading for a while but i was having fun with it and once i had fun with it then it was using 20 seconds of courage to ask the community 
how I could provide a product or service to them in exchange for, you know, paying my salary and identifying a way to turn it into a business. Mm -hmm. Then it was taking the jump using 20 seconds of courage to quit the day job. Um, It happens step by step and it requires a little bit of courage at each step. So just having steps that you're working on and knowing that you might take a side step or identify a side quest, or there could be a plot twist because, uh, you know, oh, we have a baby coming that I was unaware of, or, you know, who knows what it could be like, that's life. And we're all trying to figure it out. Like I said, we're all emotional disasters on a rock hurtling through space. We're all trying to figure out how to have a little bit of fun in our brief window on this planet to do something meaningful. And, um, I think that means examining where our time is going and what we're giving our attention to, and then making some small changes and towards the direction of the the person or the life that we're looking to try to live. I mean, I can't believe this is almost an hour. I mean, it's, I, could, I could speak to you all day, but I think that's the thing is it's like we could sit and argue about what's the best diet, what's the best like workout methodology to do. And, you know, none of that changes if people aren't being who they truly want to be, you know, if they're not living the life they want. And I love how, you know, you you make it like be the hero of your own journey, be the hero of your own movie. Do you think that's the the first step for somebody listening who wants to transform, who wants to become who they are, like the person, the let their alter ego out, the average Joe and Jane, to let, you know, to actually just write out what they want from life and start to become the hero of their own story? Yeah, I mean, I realize it's kind of a bit egotistical. Like, I'm the main character on this planet. And like, mm. the reality is like, we're all a character in this multiplayer game of life. So uh, I think, you know, maybe identifying and thinking of it through that lens. Like, we all love the the training montage of like Rocky training in the Russian, you know, in the mountains mm. of Russia to fight Ivan Drago. And like, we see that montage in two minutes and there's like a cool song playing. But like, that's months of miserable training. Like, to make a montage, you have to do a lot of work. So identifying or acknowledging that like, hey, I'm currently doing the drudgery that will be the montage aspect of my story looking back a few years from now, I think can be helpful. And then, yeah, identifying or, or you know, really leaning into that idea of this hero's journey and you being the hero on a journey um, kind of helps you paint the obstacles in your way a little differently. And the plot twists and the rejections and the challenges are, you know, we all know, we all have the story of like, oh, this thing went, this thing happened in my life and it was bad. But looking back 10 years later, that was one of the best things to happen to me. Like, I'm so thankful I lost that job or I'm so thankful I got cut from the basketball team or I'm so thankful I got cheated on. Um, It turns out Mm -hmm. those were the moments that, looking back 10 years later, like I'm so those are the that was the impetus or that was the turning point for me to start making changes or that I hit rock bottom. Like those are the best superhero stories. Those are the best heroes journeys to follow. So I think for each person, it's identifying or acknowledging that like, hey, if I am a character in this game, or I'm a character in this story, what do I want the character's journey to look like? What do I want, you know, when, when this character returns home from this hero's journey, what is life like for them at that point? And get very specific. What is it, you know, what does a day look like from a work perspective? Does from a, you know, time after work with loved ones, um, hobbies, uh, where do you live? Where is your next trip going to be? Like getting specific with all of those things kind of takes it from this nebulous daydream to like a very concrete, um, existence and a very concrete thing that you can then start to backtrack on and say like, or not backtrack, but like start to put steps in between where you are currently, your current version of your character and this leveled up life version of you down the road, you can start to say like, all right, well, if my job is going to be this and it's going to be in this part of the country, like I sh- maybe I should start looking at jobs in a different field or I should, you know, go visit that place and put it on the calendar. And even if you don't have the money yet, setting aside five bucks a month into a travel fund that is labeled, uh, you know, I want to go to San Diego or I want to go to Paris, France, or I want to go to, um, you know, Thailand, whatever it may be, identifying some specific thing and then taking one small action like that day, whether it's calling somebody who has been there or putting five bucks aside in a savings account or, you know, five pounds or whatever it may be 
and saying like, I'm living differently now. There's that other great quote by Bertrand Russell. It's like, you're under no obligation to who, to be who you were five minutes ago. Like hmm. life can be different after listening to this podcast. You can decide that you're going to do something differently and life will be different. And it just requires you to start acting differently. And that one action can be small. Nobody needs to know about it, but you will know that the old you wouldn't have done it. And this new version of you is doing things differently. And we all know in order to get different results, you're going to have to start taking different actions. No, I love it. I mean, it's, I mean, that's why I highly love your book. Like, um, it's breaks it down into such great detail into each area, but it's fun to read and it's fun to explain because a lot of times you go into these fitness sites and it's do eight sets of squats for four reps at a time. And you're like, yeah, but I'm still disappointed because I broke out with my ex. At least you, <laughs> break, you know, you break it into fixing us as a whole, making us fit and enjoying our life, but also being who you truly are. You should be immensely proud of what you've created. I mean, I'd love to do a round two and go into things deeper, but what habits would you want? You know, because I think that's something that's like, you know, you say you sleep better, you know, get a better duvet. That's plus one experience point. Get a better, <laughs> you know, like you could level up in so much in your life. So for people listening, what would you want them to take from this until we can get a round two and talk for uh, about all sorts of things how would you want people to go from now because you'll probably have to help so many people finally decide to make that change in their life but what would you want them to take from this well thank you and i know i know you and i have been trying to schedule this for geez probably what seems like years at this point um so uh yeah absolutely let's do a round two um down the road for sure uh, i don't know i guess what i want people to take from this is just a reminder to have like I want you to have some self-compassion about where you are right now. We all are playing the game of life on different levels of difficulty. We all didn't know what we didn't know. And we are where we are now um, as a result of things that have happened to us or because of us or you know, outside of our control over the past however many years. Um, but moving forward, you do have a choice. And that choice is to continue down the same path or to start trying to do things a little bit differently. Hmm. Um, and I would love to have, you know, people that are interested in living a little bit differently. Uh, check us out at nerdfitness.com. Um, we're on all the, you know, I'm on, we're on Instagram, uh, we're on Facebook, or any of those platforms. If you just want to kind of dip your toe in and see what we're all about and what we stand for. Uh, but I, I think for people listening, you're under no obligation to be who you were five minutes ago. And that means today can be a little different than yesterday. And that means doing something differently today that you wouldn't have done. That could be going for a five minute walk or doing dropping down and doing five push ups right now, but just something that is like life is different than it was before I listened to this. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. Identify the, your favorite heroes and stories and finding ways to pay, uh, pay homage to them with your actions, I think could be pretty dang fun. And then uh, if you're looking for help with any of this stuff, this is what we do. We're pretty darn good at it. We have this pretty cool community at Nerd Fitness. Um, we have the, our fun habit building app called Nerd Fitness Journey. And then for somebody that's looking for like even more uh, specific instruction on like health and nutrition and wanting a, a Yoda in their pocket, we have a uh, Nerd Fitness Coaching, which is like one-on-one. -on -one. We pair you up with one of the 20 coaches at Team Nerd Fitness who uh, live and breathe this stuff and will help you um, essentially turn yourself into a superhero. I mean, you've done some amazing things, you know, you should be immensely proud of this, what you've created, but when you read the things you've done, like, you know, you changed, you've never been outside the North America and now you were traveling to Monte Carlo and playing poker like James Bond, you were doing all these amazing things. What's left on your epic quest? You know, you were talking about playing the violin and playing with musicians. And there's all these amazing things you've done. But what's next for you? Look, how how do you keep this roller coaster of awesomeness going? What what do you that's want a, to achieve in life? <laughs> how do you keep leveling great, up? That's a great question. Um, I do truly feel like I went on a hero's journey. I did travel the world. I visited six continents and and visited you know twenty plus countries and um, I I feel like I returned home a changed person. And, and I'm so thankful for doing those things. And I'm now 
you know, thankful I'm now playing life as a multiplayer game as well. I, I got married six months ago to my uh, my wife, Alex. We uh, rescued, we have two, you know, rescue dogs, um, Olive and Pepper. And, uh, you know, we're in the process of like leveling up the house that we bought. Uh, you know, in the video you can see behind me, I have uh, a bookshelf that my wife and I built and she helped design and uh, put together. But it's, um, you know, I've been kind of leveling up there. I've actually been leveling up a lot in golf. Uh, I played golf in high school and growing up, but then I took probably 10 years away from it. You know, I played occasionally, but since, you know, kind of during the pandemic and uh, my now wife and I moving to a different part of the country, uh, I've been playing more golf. I've hired a, a Yoda who I take a lesson from once a month and golf is great because there is a score and you can see your improvement and you track your average and um, you can, you know, not only try to hit it further, but be more accurate and it tracks all that stuff. So I've really kind of fallen in love with golf again. I just got back from this amazing golf trip to Bandon, Oregon, which is like, there's like five of the top 10 public golf courses in America are all at this one resort. Um, and it was unbelievable. So I'm still playing music. Uh, I'm also in the process of hopefully, um, you know, working on, uh, another book proposal. I love the idea of writing and, uh, after writing level up your life, um, which I'm hopefully going to try to put a second edition out of in probably 2023, but then writing an additional book, uh, and, you know, truly getting back to that. Cause I just love writing. So, I'm trying to like refocus my life around writing, family, strength training, um, and then still kind of golf and music. And then we'll kind of see what where life takes me after that. So right now, from a physical skill perspective, I'm trying to level up at golf. Um, from a life perspective, my wife and I are renovating this house that was built in 1945. So there's plenty of things to be fixed and improved <laughs> upon and, and, and renovated. Um and and then i don't know enjoying the game too like being thankful and happy about today and spending time with people that are important to me today because tomorrow isn't a guarantee so um mm. that's kind of where the life is my game is taking me right now uh lots of golf some music plenty of exercise and uh still a decent amount of travel too i just got back from scotland uh, i'll be heading to new zealand this fall and um, trying to figure out where to where to go next after that. I love it. I love how you, you can make anything in life part of a game. You can level up every area of your life. And you you inspired me to do what I'm doing now. So thank you for that. You know, you inspire so many people to transform themselves and actually be themselves. And I love in the book how you talk about being a tribute for like Katniss, you know, but giving back to people, using the skills you acquire to become better people. You know, you're always looking to like to give it, pay it forward, and help others. And it's such a phenomenal message. Um, wh where would you want people to start? You have acres of content, amazing content, like stuff that make you laugh, smile, cry, inspire. Where do we start with this beast that, that is nerd fitness? There is a lot. Uh, I mean, I would say, apart from the book, start? obviously. Yeah, yeah, I mean, check out the check out the book. I'm you know I'm in a weird, an interesting spot with it where I actually just reacquired the rights from um, from the book publisher. So I know it's like you can get it on Audible, and I think there's some some other copies kicking around. But I'm in the process of like kind of revamping it uh, for like I said, it'll probably be early next year. Um, to start, if somebody's on Instagram, you know we we share we share like kind of who we are and our audience at at, uh, at nerd underscore fitness. Um, and if you just go to nerdfitness.com, like if you sign up for our email list, when I mean, we send a few emails a week that kind of share who we are and what we stand for and what our, um, you know, tips and tricks for on YouTube. So like really like what is the platform that you enjoy the most? We're probably on it. And that might be the best way to kind of dip your toe in. Um, I think that would probably be a pretty good place to start. Well. That's it for another week, and thank you for listening. It's now time to take what you've learned and use it to develop and enhance your life with the key points mentioned. Listen, try it, embrace it, use it, and crush it. Now's your time to hit that next level in your life.
If you liked this episode, then please leave a comment on the show notes or a review of the show on your podcast platform. Everything helps evolve the show. Until next week, keep seeking the next level in your life.